please silence and please make sure that you are not leaving or coming in during any of the performances. All of our children work very, very hard and we want to make sure that we are respecting the things that they are doing on this stage, please and thank you. That now brings us to our 130 performance, School G, The Cry of the Peacock by Billy the Boom. Please give them a round of applause. Yes. Can you please tell me how Mary came to have those scratches? She says she has nightmares. Is this the first time this has happened? No. Approximately how many times? Probably four or five since she was little. They've just never looked like this. Due to the severity of the wounds, the school called Child Protective Services. And it's my job to figure out who or what did this to Mary. They're scratches. Kids get scratches. Mr. Blanton. Are you accusing us of hurting our daughter? No, ma'am. I just need to figure out what she has to say. Fine. What else would you like to investigate? How many hangnails she's had? How many times she stubbed her toe? Jeez, that's enough. Dr. Todd, what else do you need to know? When was the first time you noticed these marks on Mary's neck? Last Monday, before school. I would like you to take me back to last Monday morning, when they first appeared. Was anything unusual or out of the ordinary that morning? No, it was completely routine. Mary? 
Mary, the bus is here. Mary, what happened to your neck? Nothing, I scratched myself, I'm fine. Must have been a very bad dream. Can you tell me how it happened, Peacock? I don't know, I was asleep and then had a bad dream. Did someone do this to you at school? No, I have to leave or I'll miss the bus. Chase, I'm worried about her. She's fine. She probably got hurt at school and didn't even realize it. It's no big deal. But she's I heard what she said, but it's nothing to worry about. Thank you for telling me your side of the story. I'll have to go speak with Mary. Mary, do you know how you got those marks that are on your neck? Can you tell me how it happened? Can you tell me who hurt you? Why can't you? I promised I wouldn't. Who did you promise? Can you tell me what you're drawing? A peacock. Daddy called me peacock. Charlie's a peacock. How long have you been seeing Charlie? I used to go and see him down at the park with the duck pond. Rosebud Park? Yes. Here. I'm done drawing. Mary, what is this picture? It's covered in red crayon. It's Charlie. Is Charlie a red peacock? No. His feathers are blue, green, and silver. Then why is Charlie all red? Because it's blood. <coughs> why is Charlie covered in blood? Because of what those mean boys did. What mean boys? Just some mean boys. They were older than me. Mary, can you tell me what happened? Manner, but the evidence presented 
led me to that conclusion. And what evidence led you to that conclusion? It was Mary's testimony, Your Honor. And you do not think the boys at the park had anything to do with this abuse? No, Your Honor. And this incident in the park, was it real or fictional? At the time, I didn't know what to believe. Something of that nature should have made headlines in our little town. <coughs> and this Peacock Charlie, he was fictitious as well. At the time, I was suspicious. Did I believe he was stoned to death? I wasn't sure. I believe that Charlie was more than just a peacock, but that he was the key to unraveling this abuse. some more questions? I guess. Let's back up a little in our story. What can you tell me about Charlie? He's a peacock. I know he's a peacock. What do you like about peacocks? I like their feathers. Because of the pretty colors? No, I like their eyes. The eyes on the feathers? Yes. What do you like about the eyes? With that many eyes, nothing can ever sneak up on a peacock because it can see the trouble before it gets there. But it's not true. What do you mean? Charlie didn't see the boys pick up those rocks. Were the boys the one that put the marks on your neck? No. Mary, this is important. Did those boys hurt you in any way? They pushed me down and hurt my back. And they killed Charlie. When did this happen? Can you guess when it happened? I think it was before Halloween. Because I was going to go dressed as a peacock match Charlie, but he died, so I never went. Can you show me where on your back you got hurt? All right. Mary, what happened? Who did this to you? I can't tell you. I promise I won't tell. You can tell me, Mary. Charlie said no one will believe me, and you won't believe me either. Mary, if you tell me the absolute truth, I promise I will believe you. All right, so tell me, what happened? I guess she loved all the pretty colors. 
Anyway, the name stuck. Does Mary ride the bus home from school? No, normally she walks over. Has she ever spoken to you about something happening in the park? No. That she may have been attacked by some boys, older boys? Did she tell you their names? I can either point them out at the school, and if they touch my little girl, I swear, I will tear them apart piece by piece. You will do no such thing. Mary is not to leave here with anyone until I finish my investigation. And if this did happen, the police will handle it. Not you. Fine. You have some anger issues, Mr. Blanton. I guess. I thought we were talking about Mary. Yes, in due time. Then ask me what you really want to know. Did you put those marks on Mary? No. Do you know who did? No. Have you ever abused your daughter? No. Who abused you as a child? What? Who abused you? My father. What did he do? Hit me when he'd been drinking. And when I was crying on the floor, he would kick me. Do you drink? Mr. Blanton? No. They say alcoholism is genetic, so I swore I would never drink and become like that again. Mr. Blanton, abuse is cyclical. The abused grow up and become abusers. How dare you accuse me of abusing my daughter? I love her. Maybe so. What do you know about Mary's school? Is she a good student? Mary tries very hard in her schoolwork, but she struggles some. She would stay after school many days a week to get extra help from her teacher. Can you tell me what she said about her teacher, Miss Cooper? She doesn't talk about her much, but I think she's brought Mary home a few times. How are you doing, Mary? Is your work almost finished? Yes, Miss Cooper. Just a few more math problems. Would you like some help? Maybe. Let me see. Multiplication by nines. Mary, I have a very special secret to help you with this one. Would you like to know? A secret? Sure. Okay, let me see your hands. So, one times nine is nine, and two times nine is 18. Do you see the trick? Mm -hmm. Three times nine is 27. Now it's your turn. Four times nine is? It's 36, that's right. See, wasn't that a good secret? Yeah, and this will be our little secret, Mary. Nobody else will ever have to know. All right, thank you. Hey, it's getting pretty late. Would you like to ride back to your house? No, it's all right. I live just past the park. Okay, be safe on your way home. Miss Cooper? Yes? I changed my mind. I don't want to walk past the park anymore. Could you give me a ride? Of course, Mary. I would love to give you a ride. Thank you for sitting down with me again, Mrs. Blanton. I just have a few more questions I need you to answer before I can wrap up my interview. Then let's get this over with, please. When was the last time Mary woke up with these marks? I told you. Did she tell you how she got them? She says she has nightmares. Mrs. Blanton, she told me that monsters or demons came out from under her bed and attacked her and Charlie. Who's Charlie? Her imaginary friend, who doubles as her protector from these nightmares. Imaginary friend? Dr. Todd, very school to believe that. Charlie's a peacock, apparently. A peacock? Yes, one that goes everywhere with her and keeps her safe from harm. But who would hurt our Mary? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to figure out. So I need you to tell me. What happened when she woke up with these marks? I don't remember. It seems just like normal. What about the time before when they first appeared? Was anything unusual? No, it's completely normal. Well, sometimes Chase stays behind. And he sinks her to sleep. 
Are you sleepy? No. Here, roll over and I'll rub your back and sing you to sleep, okay? Okay. Hush, little Mary, don't say a word. Daddy's gonna buy you a mockingbird. And if that mockingbird don't sing, daddy's gonna buy you a diamond ring. Sweet dreams, peacock. No! Chase loves Mary! He would never hurt Mary! This is Flynn. He may not be the one creating the wound, but he still may be responsible. What are you saying? That Mary may be self-mutilated as a subconscious cry for help. No, not Chase. He loves Mary. Mrs. Linton, most abuse takes place in the home. No, I refuse to believe it. Believe it or not, Mrs. Linton, that's the truth. My poor little Mary. Doctor, what can be done? There's a medication. It's typically given to individuals suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. But in this case, I think it'll help Mary. When will she start this medicine? Today. Mary can come home? Under two conditions. First, that Mary has to take this medicine. And next, that Mr. Blanton cannot stay in the home. But if either of these terms are not fulfilled, I will recommend that Mary be remanded into the custody of the state foster care system. Is this understood? Yes. Then it's settled. Mary, can you come in here, please? Mary, something's happening inside of your head, and I have to get to the bottom of it. So you'll have to start taking some medicine. It'll make all the nightmares go away, and it'll clear your mind. They'll go away, and they'll never be able to hurt you again. Do you promise they will never come back? Mary, I promise.
to get some rest. Behind their love, blood, 